Hello there, my name is Joe Martin. I'm the pastor at First Baptist Church in Toledo, Washington. Thanks for taking a few moments to look at this video and maybe you can share it with somebody as well. We've been talking about walking through loss and there has been a lot of loss. We have to learn how to deal with it. We can't avoid it. And what we really need, it seems, in this day, in both our own lives and in our our whole country, is we need a mighty wave of comforters. You know, sometimes we talk about what we need is a great wave, of a revival, sweep the country. And I, I think that's true, but I think that would look like a mighty wave of comforters in these days of loss. There's been friends that have been lost and family members, moms and brothers and sisters. And uh, we talked about that in the midweek service about the many, many people who have, have passed, um, both from the pandemic, but also from other things and how that leaves a hole in our heart. You know, you don't know how important someone was to you until they're not there. And it can be um, a family member. It could be the loss of opportunities. There are many disappointments in these times. People have been disappointed. And when people get disappointed, they don't always handle it well. It creates a lot of contention and conflict and chaos. And that's what we've seen in our society. That's what we've seen in our country. You know, people are from every side are saying we need cooler heads to prevail. We meet in and, and what they're really saying is we need a mighty wave of comforters. We don't need more contenders or conspirators and people who are passing on conspiracies. We don't need more contrarians. We need comforters. And I understand why some of you feel discouraged. You know, the Bible says hope deferred makes a heart grow sick. And we do feel sick in our heart. We feel disappointed at times by how other people handle things, by how things are handled and how things go. But what we do with that disappointment says more about our walk with God than it does about the situations and the people involved. You know, we cry out, and I understand how you feel disappointed. You know, Psalm 119, 82 says, My eyes fail for longing for your word while I say, When will you comfort me? God, I need you to comfort me. And God does comfort us. God comforts you. He comforts us, and he comforts through us. That's how he works. You know the word comfort in the Bible in the, in the New Testament, it comes from the word para. It's a Greek word, two Greek words, para, where we see beside, and kaleo, para kaleo. And so it means the same word that we use for encouragement. So I want to tell you, as you listen to this message, be comforted. This is what God wants for you. He wants you to be comforted, even if you're in the depths of mourning. Matthew 5, 4 says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. You say, well, you're not feeling it right now. It's coming, but there's some things you can do. You have to receive that comfort. You must see your need for comfort and not minimize it or isolate yourself. And then you must seek that comfort. You know, Jesus said in, in John 14, 16, he uses the, the word comforter. Um, in the King James, or the, that's how it interprets Jesus's words. In John 14, 16, it says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. He's going to give this comforter. Who is that? But the comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring things to your remembrance, Whatsoever I have said to you, this is what he's trying to say to you. That he's going to comfort you by his own presence. It says later in John chapter 15, verse 26, But when the comforter is come, whom I will send to you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, 
which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. He's going to remind you of who Jesus is and what he's done. He's going to remind you of his presence. And then in John chapter 16, verse 7, he says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. It's good that I'm going to go away. Because if I do not go away, the Comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. The Comforter is available for you. And he will comfort you. And he will comfort through you. Comfort comes not through a thing. It's not in the in the gospel. It isn't saying comfort is this like a, a cup of comfort. Or like some people would call it when they were drinking alcohol, southern comfort. Comfort comes personally, not through a thing, but through a person, through the Holy Spirit to you. And the Holy Spirit coming through other people to you. And sometimes through you to other people. You can't give to other people what you don't have, so you need to be comforted. You know, you can only share what you're experiencing in your own life, like this cup of tea I have. Whatever fills this cup, whatever, if I shake it, whatever fills it is going to come out. If it's full of comfort and peace and joy and love, it's going to spill that out. But if It is full of other things, animosity and resentment and disappointment and pride and um, hatred and all the other things that we've seen running rampant across the the screens of our news flashes these days. Then what's going to happen when you get shook up? Whatever's inside you is going to come out. We need, you need comfort. You need to be comforted and God is available to do it. And so you need to make sure your cup is full of the presence of the Holy Spirit. You need to receive that, invite him, ask him to be with you. You say, well, what can I do to experience this comfort? Well, number one, you need to pray. Say, dear God, please fill me with your spirit. Fill me with the comforter. And then part of that will be you need to surrender. You know, that's what that exhaling is. Lord, I'm, I'm exhaling. I'm emptying myself out so that as you fill me, as I trust you, they used to say, it's, it's confession. I need you. It's submission, petition. And we ask him and he will fill us. We ask him. And then, You can sit before the Lord. Sometimes you just need to sit in silence, not saying anything or doing anything. Just let the stream run clear. As the old saying is, let the cream rise to the top. It just takes some time to be still and know that he is God. There's comfort in that. Sometimes you may need to sing. You need to sing that reminds you we remember what God has done. In those songs. Sometimes you need to talk, not just to God, but to other people. That's what Hebrews 3.13 says, encourage one another, but encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. You know, the word, remember, the word encourage is the same word that we get for comfort, parakaleo, but comfort one another day after day. You encourage one another. You you use this way. And you know what happens if you don't? You get off on yourself and you get in your little, your little bubble and you get hard-hearted toward God and others. And then he goes on to say, for we have become partakers in Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our assurance firm until the end. And then, you know, we need to walk with God. But sometimes that literally means you just need to walk out into God's beautiful creation and and let him comfort your heart. You know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He makes me lie down in quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me beside that beautiful lake. And then he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, you, they come from me. You have to walk with him. And then, like I said, remember. I have remembered your ordinances, Psalm 1952 says. From old, O Lord, and comfort myself. You remember the promises of God, his faithfulness to you. And you know what else I like to do? I need to comfort food. You feast. Sometimes we need to feast together. Sometimes we need to feast by ourselves. That's where we get those words like comfort food. You, you, of course you, you need to be not do this too much. <laughs> but there's a good thing. You know, when you think about what is your comfort food, some people it's one thing and others it's another. For me, I love bread. Other people it's macaroni and cheese or, or pancakes with smothered in syrup. I don't know what your comfort food is, but we call it that for a reason. But not only do you need to be comforted, but you need to move out of that being comforted into the next thing, which is be comforting. You see, we need a wave of comforters in our country. You know, Second Corinthians 1, 3 says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. That's one of his names, the God of all comfort. And then he says this, who comforts us, you and me, in all of our affliction, so that we will be able, why? So that we will be able to comfort those who are, are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by Christ, by God. Isn't that amazing? You can comfort other people with the comfort you receive from the Lord. You can't skip a step. You can't give what you don't have. So take the time to be comforted. Let God use other people and you give room for God to comfort you and encourage you. But then you take that comfort and go outside of yourself into comforting other people. So that may mean you need to call them up. There's never been a better time where you could call people. You could let them know that you um, care about them and you haven't forgotten them. You talk to them. That's why he says, encourage one another, comfort one another day after day, as long as it's called the day. You don't have to have a big speech, just comfort them. You know, we, we know that there are people that they'll say, well, have him talk to him. He can calm them down. We need to be those kind of people. You don't need to be the person that's in the... If everywhere you go, there's a conflict and there's drama and there's everybody's in an uproar and, and, and you know, that's, that's an indictment. You need to be the person that brings calm. And then maybe you need to write them a letter, send them a note, write them a text. Maybe you need to cook them some food and drop it off, drop it by, you know, just to let them know. Or maybe you need to just listen to them for a while. Sometimes a lot of those talks is just listening and people feel better after they've been able to be listened to. Or maybe comforting for people is to pray for them, of course, but also to pray with them. Or even to sing to them. To sing to them in their moment. To sing to them in their loss. And to sing to them at the end of their life many, many times. I know I've done that with people, just gone and saying, saying to them and, and tried to bring comfort to them. But more than anything, if you are going to um, bring comfort to other people, remind them. Cause them to remember the goodness and the grace of God. You know, this Sunday in the stadium, we're going to take the Lord's Supper. You know, you got to remember that the reason why we're called to do that as a group is because we are to help each other remember the grace of God, the amazing things that Jesus has done for you and for us. He said, do this in remembrance of me. 
You know, I want to encourage you to be an agent of the Holy Spirit, that you would be that person in your family or in your circle of friends or in your whatever your community might be, that you would be the agent of comfort. You would be a part of that wave of the Holy Spirit bringing comfort and the comfort along with it brings kindness and compassion and empathy to the people around you. Even people that you've disagreed with, even people that you uh, may have issues with, but you're going to pray for them and you're going to not just, you know, um, decide that you're not going to do something terrible. You're going to decide to do something good. That's what we're supposed to do. And so, You overcome evil with good. And one of the greatest goods you can do is be a comforter. Thanks for listening. God bless you.